What's up, what's up? Mr. Alvarez here, Mr. O. Today we're gonna go over with Unit 8 Test Practice. Maybe we're not gonna be able to answer them all, but we're gonna do majority of it, okay? So let's go ahead now. So make sure you have the practice sheet. Uh, number one, simplify. 5i plus 3 plus i plus 8i. Remember, you just combine the like terms here. So... 5i and i, there's an imaginary 1 there, and 8i, they're all like terms. So 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 8 is 14i, 3 has no other term that are that is like terms, so just put the 3 there. <coughs> Subtraction. If you have subtraction, you know you're going to flip the sign of the second one. So this will become now positive 2, negative 4i. I have a 5 and 2. That will give me a 7, a positive 7. You can put plus 7 or just 7 there. 6i minus 4i is positive 2i. And that's the answer. Uh, let's do foil. Foil. Negative 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Negative 6 times negative 8i is positive 48i. 6 times 6i times 3 is positive 18i. And positive 6i times negative 8i is negative 48i squared. What is i squared? i squared is equal to negative 1. So I can replace this one by negative 1. What's negative 1 times negative 48? It's going to be positive 48. Drop the negative 18. You have here are like terms. These two here are like terms. 48 plus 18a, 18i will be uh, 66i. You can combine negative 18 and 48. That will give you 30. So 30 plus 66 I. And that's the answer. <coughs> One more foil. Let's do number 8. You can distribute 3 then 2. 3 times 2 will give you 6. 3 times negative 4i is negative 12i. Negative 8i times 2 is negative 16i. And negative times negative is positive. 8 times 4 is 32 i squared and we know that i squared is negative 1 you multiply the 32 becomes negative 32 these two here are like terms here because they both have an i this will be negative 28 i and you have a 6 minus 32 drop the 6 there 6 minus 32 is negative 26 negative 28 i and that's the answer for number eight <coughs> Now, how do we solve each, uh, the equation by taking the square root? We just have to take the square root of that. Take the square root of that one. Cross it out. We know that every time we have a negative there, it an i will come out and square root of 36. What is square root of 36? We know it's 6. So the answer is 6i with a plus or minus n equals that. Number 10, take the square root, take the square root. And again, if you have a negative inside, it will have an i, square root of 5. Can you break down the square root of 5? No. Unlike this, 36 can be breaking down to a 6 and 6. That's your group. That's why you have a 6 there. But a 5, you cannot break it down. So leave it inside the square root and put the plus or minus outside together with the i. <coughs> okay. Find the value that completes the square. Mm -hmm. So you have to identify this information to complete the square by dividing the B, that's your B, divided by 2 and square it. The B is negative 28 divided by 2, and that will give you negative 14 squared. And what's 14 squared? That is going to give you, I don't have a calculator with me. And I think the answer is 196. I hope I'm right. Mm -hmm. 196. 
<coughs> and then use to rewrite them as a perfect square, there should be two answer. Just write x minus 14, whatever that number there, square it, and that's the answer. Okay? Solve each equation by completing the square. <coughs> so, it has to be always equal to zero. That's number one. Uh, which is, it is already number 15. So, you need to move the 69 to the other side. If you do that one, it becomes x squared minus 20x is equal to positive 69. You're going to add a number here and a number there. You're going to apply the complete the square by getting the b, which is negative 20. You divide by 2 and you square it. Negative 10 squared is going to give you 100. So you're going to add 100 here and 100 there. The factors of x squared minus 20x is x minus 10 and another x minus 10. But since they're going to be the same, I'm going to put a square there. It's equal to 169. Take the square of that. Take the square of that. x equal to or x minus 10 equals plus or minus 13. If you break down the 169, you will have 13 and 13. And then you're going to add 10 here, add 10 there. So you, now you're going to have x is equal to positive 13 plus 10. And x is equal to negative 13 plus 10. The answer for the first one is 23. The answer in the next one is x is equal to negative 3. Very easy, right? <coughs> one more time. Uh, let's look at number 18. 18, comparing to number 15, 15 is equal to 0. Unlike 18, it's not. You have to make it equal to 0. So I have to move the 2p to the other side. So I'm going to write here so I have enough space. p squared minus 2p minus 8 is equal to 0. If you notice, when I move the 2p to the left, who's a positive here, but if I move it to the left, it becomes negative there. And it's squeezed in between p squared and 8 because that's your a... That's your B, that's your C. Now, since we're solving by the square, I'm going to have to move this one to the other side. Gives you now P squared minus 2P equals 8 on the other side. Whatever I write here, whatever I write there, they have to be the same. The formula is negative 2. That's from the B here. You divide it by 2 and you square it. That will give you negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. So you're going to add one here, add one there. This is always positive. The factors of this are P minus 1 and P minus 1. Since they're going to have two of that, so I'm just going to square it. It's equal to 9. 8 plus 1 is 9. Take the square root, take the square of that. P minus 1 is equal to positive negative 3. You can split them in two. One is P minus 1 is equal to positive 3. The other one is p minus 1 is equal to negative 3. You're going to solve for a p by adding 1, adding 1, adding 1, adding 1. p is equal to 4. p is equal to negative 2. And that's the answer. Kaboom. Write the values of a, b, and c for number 19. Is this equal to 0? Yes, that's great. So therefore, A is a number beside the X squared or N squared, which is, in this case is 4. B here is 7. C here is equal to 8. Very simple, right? Solve each equation by quadratic formula. Here, you might, we, might, we might need a little room. So let me write it here. So for number 21 there, B squared minus 7B minus 60 is equal to 0. So, in this case, A is equal to 1, B is equal to negative 7, C is equal to negative 60. Remember, guys, that I know that this is the right values of A, B, and C because it's equal to 0 already. So, using the formula, X equals negative B, so negative negative 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared. Please use, say, parenthesis, especially if it's negative, minus 4A negative 60 all over 2a. <coughs> x equal to 2 negatives will become positive 7 plus or minus the square root. Negative 7 squared is 49. 
negative times negative is positive. 4 times 6 is 240 all over 2. Okay? X equal to 7 plus or minus square root of 289 divided by 2. Square root of 289, I think, is 17 and 17. Yep. So I can simplify square root of 289 into, let me write down here, x equal to 7 plus or minus 17 all over 2. So some of you still write the square root here after they simplify. No, once you break down the square root of 289 to 17, 17, the square root is gone, only just 17. Now you split them in two. One is seven plus 17 divided by two. One is seven minus 17 divided by two. Seven plus 17 will give you 24 divided by two, which is just 12. Seven minus 17 will give you negative 10 divided by two, which is negative six. Negative five, negative five, sorry. Okay, so those are the two answers, 12 and negative five. One more. For number 24 here, uh, if you notice, it's not still arranged. So I'm going to try to move this 7p squared to the other side. So this will be now negative 7p squared. And again, if you move it to the other side of the equation, the sign change. And I'm going to flip this around because I like the b to be next after a and then positive 2 there. So the problem now is... 7p squared, negative 7p squared minus 2p plus 2 is equal to 0. That's what you want to like to do. a is equal to negative 7, b is equal to negative 2, c is equal to positive 2. So x is equal to negative negative 2 plus or minus square root of negative 2. Use parentheses and uh, because you're dealing with negative 2 there. Minus 4ac all over 2 times negative 7. Negative, negative will become positive for uh, 2 plus or minus square root. This will be 4. Negative times negative, there will be a positive. So I put plus there. 4 times 7 is 28 times 2 is 56 all over negative 14. Because 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. 56 plus 4 is 60 all over negative 14. Yeah, you can break down 60 to 20 and 3. Uh, what else? 5 and 4, 2 and 2. You have a pair there of 2, and the 5 and 3 will stay inside, which you multiply. So that gives you x equal to 2 plus or minus 2 plus uh, square root of 15 divided by negative 14. Now, all of this one here, the Bermuda Triangle, 2, 14, and 2, they're all divisible by 2 there. So that gives us x is equal to 1 plus or minus 1 square root of 15 over negative 7. Or you could have negative 1 plus or minus 1 square root of 15 divided by 7. Basically what happened there, you just divide the 1 by negative 7, which becomes still negative there. I just transferred this negative up, up there. That's why they have that. Okay? Very simple, okay? And good luck on your test and kaboom!